John Brown está acusado de daños y prejuicios por haber dañado tres coches y una puerta de garaje. La situación se desarrolla en un juzgado de Reino Unido, donde un juez va a valorar si es culpable o no y, consecuentemente, le impondrá la pena correspondiente. Se necesitará la ayuda de un intérprete para que la testigo, una mujer española, pueda comprender todo el proceso. Um, John Brown, on the 23rd of March, without lawful excuse, you damaged three vehicles in a garage door. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Se llama a la testigo a declarar. Me despertó un hombre gritando muy fuerte. Fui a mirar a la ventana y lo vi tambaleándose por la calle. Estaba bastante borracho. Luego me pareció que estaba rayando el capó de un coche. Paró y se dirigió al siguiente coche. So what did you do then? Me pareció que se dirigía a mi coche, así que abrí la ventana y le grité que parase. Cuando me vio se enfureció y rayó mi coche. Después se fue corriendo. Mi marido y yo bajamos para mirar nuestro coche y vimos que estaba rayado. También vimos que había marcas en otros dos coches de dos unos vecinos. Entonces fue cuando llamamos a la policía. What happened after the police arrived? Llegaron a las dos y media de la madrugada y vieron al hombre haciendo un graffiti en la puerta de un garaje. Lo registraron y encontraron una llave con pintura. Lo arrestaron y me llamaron para una rueda de reconocimiento. La defensa y la acusación intervienen para defender a sus clientes. Mr. Brown has a previous conviction for damaging property. He's clearly not learned any lessons from this, uh, and your worship should take this into account in sentencing for his offense. My client's previous conviction was seven years ago and was committed when he was a juvenile. He has not reoffended since. In my submission, it is neither recent nor relevant and should not be given any weight in your deliberations. I would remind your worship that the fact that Mr. Brown was drunk is neither a defense nor a mitigating factor in this case. As you are well aware, the guidelines state that committing an offense while drunk makes it more serious, not less. This is not characteristic behavior. He was drunk because of a traumatic breakup with his girlfriend. I am not suggesting that Mr. Brown being drunk should act in his favor. I am asking you to consider, as a mitigating factor, the personal issues that led him to get drunk in the first place. Your Worship will have seen a letter from Mr. Brown's employer about his good character. Mr. Brown has had a steady job as a delivery man for over a year. If he received a prison sentence, he would lose his job, which would do nothing to help his prospects of rehabilitation. Is there anything you want to say, Mr. Brown? My girlfriend broke it off that night. I was gutted. I've been with her nearly two years. I don't know what happened. I just lost it. It definitely won't happen again. Please stand, Mr. Brown. For the offense of criminal damage, we can impose a maximum sentence of three months in prison. However, we consider your offense serious enough to impose a community, a community sentence as well. We have taken into account your previous conviction, but noted that it was for a single offense and committed some time ago. We took into account that you were drunk, which is no excuse for your actions. However, we have also borne in mind that your behavior is, it was uncharacteristic and prompted by the breakup of your relationship, and that you have shown genuine remorse. Uh, weighing up these factors, we felt, we felt your behavior would be better tackled by a, a way of high-level community sentence. Uh, it will give you the opportunity to put something back into your community. Given that you're employed, we also have added compensation to the victims of your crime to the sentence.